welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is March 5th, 1955, and the title is Kite's Reward. Let's get into it. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filter. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful, and a little lonely. <laughs> Barkeep. What'll it be, young fellow? Draw me a beer, will you? Got it right here. That looks mighty good. Right, huh? Far enough. I ain't seen you around Dodge before. No. There you are. Thanks. Take it out of that, will you? Take two out of that, Barkeep. Hmm? I'm having a beer, too. Any objections? Give him a beer, Barky. <laughs> and that's right smart of you, fella. I ain't looking for trouble. Of course you ain't. Not with Jake Kroll, you ain't. Not with anybody, mister. I said my name was Kroll, didn't I? I heard it. Well, maybe you ain't so smart as I thought. Barkeep, I'll have a shot of whiskey with that beer. What about it, young fellow? You buying him whiskey, too? Anybody drinks with me, drinks what I drink. <laughs> Bring me the beer, Barkeep. Okay, Yeah. Now, young fella, I'm going to show you what happens to people that don't do as I tell them. Watch how I drink your beer. <laughs> Sticky wet, ain't it, young fella? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <coughs> Hit me, eh? Now I'm going to have to kill you. Killed him. Oh, Marshal Dillon. Oh? Did you see that, Marshal? Jake drew first, not the boy. Jake made him fight. He was bullying him right from the start, and then he drew first. I'll be witness to that. I saw it. I came through the door just as it happened. Good thing you saw it, Marshal. Give me your gun. What? That ain't right, Marshal. It was self-defense, pure and simple. I said, give me your gun. Marshal, you ain't listening. It's okay, Barkey. It's okay. Here's my gun, Marshal. My office is across the street. Let's go. It ain't fair, I tell you. You saw it. Got, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. I heard the shot. Did he fire it? Yeah. Sit on there, fella. Anybody get hurt? Jake Crowell. He killed him. He did? It was self-defense, Chester. Well, then, why'd you arrest him? I'd kind of like to know myself. 
What's your name? Andy. Andy Travis. Where are you from? On west of here. I'm just drifting. How old are you, Andy? Twenty. Where'd you learn to use a gun? What do you mean? Jake had his halfway out of the holster before you even started. He did? Well, say now, you must be pretty fast, He's man. real fast, Chester. That's why I brought him over here. What? I'm not arresting you, Andy. I wanted to see what you're like. What I'm like? Why? It happened to me once, Andy. And it's happening to you. Anybody that can use a gun the way you can has to make a choice. You can go on using it, or you can quit before you got blood all over you. I don't like killing people, Marshal. I've done it before. I had to, same as today. But I don't like it. How'd you get so good? Practice. All my life I've practiced. I don't know why. It was fun at first, but it ain't fun now. It just leads to trouble. That's all I ever got out of it. Trouble. Then why are you still wearing it? I don't know. I wouldn't feel right without it, I guess. How long you been in Dodge, Henry? Just got here today. And you've already killed a man, huh? And the barkeep is going to tell everybody in town just how fast you are. And the first thing you know, you're going to have a reputation. It won't be very long before somebody tries to cut you down for it. You're going to have to go on killing the rest of your life. However long that is. It's too late already, Marshal. No, it isn't. You're not a killer, Andy. I know a killer when I see one. No. No, I'm sure not. But you're going to have to kill one man after another. I know. Well, I'm not going to watch it. You take your gun off and you leave it off or you get out of Dodge. You go do your killing someplace else. Marshal, you think I could find a job here? Chester. Yes, sir. Moss Grimmick's looking for a man over at the stable. Yes, sir. On your feet, Andy. I'll show you where it is. out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. 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 The Miracle Tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. And notice how mild it is. L&M stands out for effective filtration. 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 No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. L&M's got everything. L&M, light and mild. America's best filter tip cigarette. Andy didn't say anything. He just got up and followed Chester out of the office, leaving his gun with me. I unloaded it, threw it in a drawer, and I hoped it'd stay there forever. After a few weeks had passed and it was still there, I began to think that maybe it would. Andy worked out fine at the stable. Everybody liked him. And Moss Grimmick soon trusted him enough to let him run things by himself while Moss started to get in more fishing than he had in years. Sometimes Chester went with Moss, and well, having Chester out of the office gave me a chance to catch up on some paperwork. This the marshal's office? Yeah, come in, come in. You, the marshal? What can I do for you? 
Remember me. What? Remember me next time you see me. I mean it. Take a good look, Marshal. Who are you, mister? Joe Kite. All right, Kite. Say your piece. I did, Marshal. I want you to know me. I want you to know my name. Why? Because I don't want you to shoot me or buffalo me or treat me in any kind of hurry at all next time you see me. Why? Because I might have to shoot a man. What are you talking about? I can't tell you now. I'll tell you after I've done it. Are you drunk? Plum, serious, Marshal. There's no need for you to get all fretted up. I'm not going to do anything wrong. Shooting people around here is wrong, mister. Kite. Joe Kite, Marshal. What are you trying to tell me? That I may have to shoot somebody. But if I do, there won't be nothing wrong about it. Now, I want you to know, in case you come running up with your finger on the trigger of a shotgun or something, you look like a bar bum to me, Kite. I doubt if you even own a gun. Oh, I'm going to get one, Marshal. I see you wearing a gun, and I'll take it off you and throw it away. Now, Marshal, that's no way to Get talk. out of here. All right. But you're going to talk different, Marshal. Keep moving. You'll see. You, you just wait. <laughs> Chester. What are you with? Uh, ah. Hello, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking so guilty about? Well, I, I, I'm not. <laughs> Nothing. Man spends all day out fishing. He deserves a little beer afterwards, <laughs> doesn't he? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Moss Grimmick? Uh, well, he went back to the stable so Andy could get away for a while. And Andy's sitting over there with Miss Kitty. Oh. Did you catch any fish? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, we did. We got a whole sack full, Mr. Dillon. All catfish. Good, good. Well, you finish your beer, Chester. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, sir. Hello, man. Hello, Kitty. Andy. Hello, Marshal. Take a chair. Ah, thank you. Ah. I uh, hear your boss is loaded with catfish, Andy. He's over at the stable now, trying to give them away to anybody who'll have them. Well, if he and Chester are going to keep on, we ought to fix up a fish muddle one of these days. A fish muddle? Huh? I never heard of that, Miss Kitty. Oh, then you've never been in Kentucky, Andy. I've seen them making in 20-gallon batches down there. It's a, oh, kind of a fish stew, I guess, but it's awful good. Say, I'd like to try that. Let's do it, huh? Uh-huh. Next week sometime. First day, Moss and Chester can guarantee the fish. I'll tell them about it. I better get back to the stable now. See you later, Miss Kitty. Okay, Andy. So long, Marshal. So long, Andy. He's an awful nice boy, Matt. Yeah, I think he's going to make out fine, Kitty. <laughs> he already has. It sure bothered him at first, though, not wearing a gun. You know, he told me he'd been working with a gun since he was about 12 years old. Yeah. You know, he's a natural, Kitty. Some men can practice all their lives and never be any good. Well... It's sure nice to know one man that wants to live peaceful. Yeah. He's mighty lucky he ran into you. What's that? You better stay in here. Don't worry. Everybody but Chester, stay right where you are. You want me to guard the door, Mr. Dillon? No, follow me. What's Andy? That fella shot him. I, I never saw that man before, Mr. Dillon. His name's Joe Kite. Joe Kite? Yeah. Hello, Marshal. You gonna use that gun again, Kite? No, no, of course I ain't. That's too bad. I kind of wish you wouldn't. Well, I told you, Marshal. I didn't do nothing wrong. Now, Marshal, no. Marshal, no. Marshal! Oh! Mr. Dillon, Andy's still breathing. Well, I'll carry him over to Doc's, Chester. Yes, sir. 
when Joe Kite comes to. You kick him into jail, huh? It'll be a pleasure. Andy feel, Mr. Dillon? Uh, Doc doesn't think he has much chance, Chester. Mm -hmm. Won't even let me talk to him. Clean murder. That's what it was. Did uh, Kite say anything? He started to, but I told him to shut his head or I'd buffalo him. Uh, well, I'll talk to him. It's about time you came, Marshal. You had no reason to lock me up. You had no reason to hit me either. I told you what might happen. Well, unlock it and let me out of here. You'll get out of there when you go to trial. That's where you're wrong, Marshal. You're going to let me out of here now. Why did you murder him, Kat? I didn't murder him. I told him I was going to take him in and he resisted. Take him in? I was going to march him right in here and turn him over to you, Marshal. What are you talking about? His name isn't Andy Travis, Marshal. It's Andy Haycox. So, of course, you didn't know it or you'd have arrested him yourself. I couldn't tell you before this or I'd have lost the reward. thousand dollars, Marshal. That's what he's worth. And I get it. You don't believe me? You ever hear the Fisher gang up around Laramie? Well, Andy Haycox is one of them. And they're all worth a thousand dollars apiece, dead or alive. I just come down from Wyoming. They got their pictures up all over. Sure lucky I recognize him, ain't I? You're lucky, Kite. You're real lucky. If Andy had been carrying a gun, you'd be dead. If he'd have been carrying a gun? He took it off his first day in Dodge, and he hasn't worn one since. I don't believe you. Don't you? No, it ain't true. No, he had it under his coat. I stopped him, and I told him to come with me, and why. And then he started to grab for his gun, and I had to shoot him. An outlaw like, like, of course he had a gun. I'll ask Andy what he did. If he lives long enough to tell me. He'll lie. You're going to take the word of an outlaw against mine? Chester. Yes, sir? I'm going out for a while. I'll be back shortly. What do you mean you ain't going to turn me loose? You're going to leave me in here? you got no right to do if that. If he gets too noisy, Chester, club him. L&M is best, stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobacco? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L and M's got everything. King size or regular, L and M is America's best filter tip cigarette. It's Matt, Doc. Come in, Matt. Come in. How is he this morning, Doc? Oh, about the same, Matt. Will talk and hurt him? Yeah, if you don't get him excited, uh, talk too long, uh, I guess it won't matter. It won't matter? Well, he thinks he's in fair shape, Matt, but uh, one hemorrhage and he's gone. 
It can happen any time. Now? You go see him. He's in the back room there. Okay, Doctor. Hello, Andy. Marshal. Well, I hear you feel pretty good. I still got a bullet in me. Oh, well, Doc will take it out as soon as he can. It wouldn't be there if I hadn't forgot I wasn't carrying a gun. I just naturally went for it. And it wasn't there. So he shot me. Yeah. I guess he's... Told you about me, Marshal. Uh, he said that uh, you're wanted up in Laramie. Dead or alive. That's what the poster said. You were part of a gang, Andy. Long enough for him to put up a reward for me. But I quit, Marshal. I quit. Well, what do you mean? A fisher and them fellas. I told them I was through. They tried to stop me, but I said I'd shoot my way out if I had to. So they let me go. You quit the gang? That's what I'm telling you. Well, why did you quit? They killed a fellow one night after they robbed him. I don't like killing people like that, Marshal. I had to quit. You should have told me, Andy. Maybe I I could have done something. It's going to make you look bad now, ain't it, Marshal? Being friends and helping me and all. No. No, it won't, Andy. I wouldn't care if it did. First time in my life anybody ever done anything for me. I'm... Sorry, it didn't work out, Marshal. Everything's going to be just fine, Andy. Don't you worry about it. No. No, it ain't, Marshal. Marshal. <laughs> uh, Doc. Doc, come in here, will you? <laughs> well, we'll do something for him, Doc. Well, I... Well, well, I'm sorry, Matt. I, I just... Oh. Oh. He's dead, Matt. Uh, Matt? Chester? Yes, sir. Bring Joe Kite in here. Okay, Mr. Dillon. All right, out of your cage, Kite. The marshal wants you. It's about time I got out of here. Oh, shut up and go on and off. Change your mind, eh, Marshal? Singing a different tune now, huh? Andy told me what happened, Kite. You're clear. I always knew I was. You should have believed me from the start, Marshal. That's all right. I don't hold no grudges. Hey, when do I get my reward money? I telegraphed Laramie a few minutes ago. You did? Good. How long do you think it'll take, Marshal? I wouldn't wait around for it, Kite. What do you mean? Andy's dead. Well, what difference does that make? I put it in the telegram. I told him Andy was dead. And that I killed him. You what? Of course, I won't collect the reward. As a U.S. Marshal, I don't get cut in on reward money. Oh, no. You're fooling me, Marshal. You didn't tell him that. I think they'll take my word against yours, Kite. And besides, Chester witnessed it. Didn't you, Chester? Yes, sir. I've I seen the whole thing. You, you, you can't do this to me. You're stealing my money. That's what you're doing. You're being a thief. You're... Get out of Dodge, Kite. Get out of Dodge while you can. Oh, no, no. He ain't done nothing. 
Open the door. Uh, this, this, this ain't fair, Marshal. You can't do it. Get out before I kill you. Mr. Dillon, I'm sure I'm sorry to hear about Andy. Yeah. Did you really telegraph all that stuff to Laramie? I didn't. Well, that's true enough. I feel like I had killed him. Oh, no, sir. And what's worse, Chester, because of me, he couldn't even die fighting. I hope I have better luck when my time comes. <laughs> Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You filter tip smokers. When you change to L and M filters, the first thing you'll notice is how mild they are, how easy they draw. Yes, L and M's pure white miracle tip lets you enjoy all the tastes. No filter compares with it for quality or effectiveness. Try L and M's right now. They're great. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Handley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Joe Duval, John Daner, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smoking with a smile, with Chesterfield, smiling all the while, with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking, by Chesterfield. So smooth, so satisfying, Chesterfield. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio show. Terry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday night. Check your local listing. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. 
This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.